Hi guys, welcome back to uh, another episode of Let's Solve. Uh, on today's episode, we are going to take a look at a little exercise called Roads Building. So Roads Building is another uh, map exercise that we uh, work with. Um, for those of you that are familiar with maps, maps are basically like connections between two points, and we use them to represent maybe cities or roads or businesses. Um, it's very good to understand some of this stuff if you want to go to work for a big tech company um, or if you want to work for a company that does maybe like logistics, uh, things of that nature. It's important to understand how two points can connect. Um, and it's also important to understand the, the fundamental principles behind uh, arrays and lists. Uh, because of course data structures and algorithms is everything in programming. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started, but let's 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 make sure we have a good explanation here. Now, these explanations in, in this programming example are kind of silly, talking about what King's bytes are. And I'm, it's kind of stupid in my opinion. So I'm just going to kind of summarize what's here. We're given a, li a number of cities, and we're given uh, a jagged array of roads, which is like an array of arrays. Uh, the cities represents how many cities we have. So if we have four cities, we have cities indexed from zero to three because the indexes are, are obviously zero indexed. So, and the roads are just a representation of which ones connect to which. So in this case, if cities is four, this is roads. This is what we're being given. Um, and in this case, we can see that city zero connects to zero, city one, city one connects to city two, City 2 connects to City 0. So the goal is, how can we determine every city, how can we determine how to connect every single city? So every single city should have one road connecting it to each other road so that we have a complete network of cities. That's the question. The answer is we have to do a lot of filtering and a lot of sorting. Um, well, more so filtering and sorting, but we'll see here in a minute. And then, so because if we see here, if, if we look at this, um, this first representation here from these roads, we can see that absolutely nothing connects to city three. So city three gets all the connections supplemented to it um, because nothing is connecting to city three in this first example. So it makes perfect sense to return zero, three, one, three, and two, three. And then we go ahead and just for those, or excuse me, push, put those into our final result list and return it. So what that looks like is these red roads here that I'm mousing over that we're looking at on the left side of the screen, those are the roads that need to be built because city one is not connected to city three, city zero is not connected to city three, and city two is not connected to city three. So we have to build those roads to ensure that every city has at least one road connecting it. Make sense? All right. So... Follow along. Oh, and a couple of rules. These have to be uh, sorted lexicographically, which is basically just like A to Z, one, two, three, you know, so in, in uh, ascending order. Um, and the um, you cannot connect the city to itself because if so, you would need a three, would have to, you'd have to have three, three, two, two, one, one, and zero, zero. That would just be connecting the city to itself, right? We don't want to do that. So it doesn't make any sense. So I broke this down. Um, I have a C sharp example that I worked on, and now I have a Python example that I've worked on. Um, I think I have it down to a pretty good list of steps that I think makes it really clear how we can work with these. So we're going to go ahead and get started here by writing out some pseudocode, listing out all our steps. So in order to do this, I've come up with about six steps. So step one is going to be create list so it's going to be our representation of our cities it's a jagged array uh, step two we're going to create an iterate over cities uh, in this case it's going to be like range cities um, because that's how we do that in python uh, in c sharp it would be like foreign i is less than cities uh, but we'll do it uh, i in range cities instead and i'll show you how to do that uh, and then uh, step three, 
filter for roads that start or end with index of IDX. In this case, IDX is the index value of our first loop. Now the reason we're doing this is because we need to get a list of all the roads currently available in the roads that were given that start or end with the current index. So, and this is just give us a list of what's there. So we figure out what to supplement. Next, step four, we need a nested loop. And we also check that JDX does not match IDX. Now JDX is gonna be our index value within our nested our nested loop, IDX being the outside value. And the first thing we need to do before we start our second iteration is make sure that those don't match because again, we don't want a city to go backwards onto itself. There's no reason for that. <clears throat> and we have two more filters here. So step five, filter, uh, sorry, check that filter, filtered, uh, roads does not contain values that start or end with JDX. So what we're doing is we're making sure that the J, because the JDX is our second index, we have to make sure that what we filtered out doesn't contain a starting or ending JDX value. The reason for that is because again, we want to make sure that it's not present in the current filtered list so that we can, you know, so that we can we can filter it out, um, and if it's needed to be added, we can add it and supplement the result list with, with what the filtered list doesn't have. So again, just work with me on this. It's going to make more sense as we go along. Um, and then finally, we have to add a sixth and final filter in our step six. So step six is going to be check that uh, result list does not contain the reverse of our current road. Now, what do I mean by that? So one of the big issues with this problem is if we have two one, like city two connects to city one, that's the same as city one connecting to city two, right? Because it's, it's the same, it's a connection. Uh, these aren't one-way streets. These are two-way streets. So you only need um, one or the other to be there. You don't need both of them to be there. Um, and again, we're, we're just trying to go through and make sure that these uh, uh, values are present. And when we talk about IDX and JDX, IDX represents the first index. Sorry about that. IDX represents the first index and JDX represents the second index. So, where does that leave us? Um, that leaves us at uh, a result that, number one, IDX doesn't match JDX. Number two, it's not in the list of filtered roads. And number three, the inverse of it is not in the result list. So that way we're only adding unique values that are not in Finally, let's go to step seven. Um, sorry, step. Check that result list is not contained in res if not add to result. And then finally, step seven, return result outside of both loops. So step one, create list. Step two, iterate over cities. Step three, filter for roads that start or end with an index of IDX. Step four, nested loop. Check that JDX does not match IDX. IDX being our first index. JDX being our second index. Step five, check that filtered roads does not contain values that start or end with JDX. Step, sorry, step five. Step six, check the result list does not contain the reverse of our current road. So one, two versus two, one, we shouldn't worry about that. If not, add to the result and finally return a result outside of both, both loops. So let's get started. We're gonna call it result and it is going to be our list. 
So that's typically how we declare a list Python. Next, we're going to create our for loop. IDX range cities. Like so. Now what that is, is we, had, we use this range to basically create like an enumerable list of um, from, from 0 to 4, not exceeding 4. So it's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3 if cities is equal to 4, and so on and so forth. All right, what's next? We're going to call this variable filter roads equals list filter. Uh, and then we're going to put our lambda in here. We'll call it r. And r0 equals equals idx or r1 equals equals idx. Now let me explain to you what this uh, line is doing and I'll put our comments above here so that everything's clearly laid out. Start or end with an index of idx. The reason we're doing that is because we want to get everything out of filter roads um, we possibly can that matches that first index. So if we're looking at index zero, we want roads that connect to zero and roads that connect starting with zero. Either or, we want that in a nice nice little list. And we use this list to grab it, and then we use this filter to filter via the i enumerable. Or sorry, not i enumerable, just enumerable uh, with our lambda expression. And you'll see here lambda r, we pass the r, which represents the values within the list, and then you get the zero, or the one, because again, we could either do this starting or ending with the current index. <clears throat> Next, we have our nested loop. Make sure we keep our indented blocks. And in this one, we're gonna check that JDX does not match IDX. So for JDX in range cities, um, if, JDX is not IDX, like so. Now, why are we doing that? Because again, cities should not connect to themselves. So we should never have, if, if we get our first value, which is IDX, and our second value, which is JDX, and they're both one, then we're not gonna add that by default. So there's no reason to go into this nested loop. Um, but let's assume that JDX and IDX are different. What should we do? Well, we're gonna use a little filter called any, um, and we're gonna invert the comparison to make sure that uh, the result is not present in our current block. So let's go ahead and put this over here. All right, step five, check that filtered roads does not contain values that start or end with JDX. Now, why is that? Because again, we're trying to filter down what's in there to make sure that it doesn't already have what's in our current index. And if so, we have one more check to run before we add it to our result list. So let's go, if not any filter lambda, Let's go uh, r0, and it does not contain, so start or end with JDX. It should be with JDX for r1 equals equals JDX, like so. Okay? Again, we're checking to make sure that of the filtered roads, there are no answers that do not start with, that do not start or end with IDX or JDX. So we've checked for the first index within our first filter up here on line seven. And now we're checking our second filter, right? So we have one more check to go. And that is going to be, I'm going to grab this and go, oh, I'm going to fix this. I'm not sure if that's right. Check that result list does not contain a reverse of our current road. The reason why is because, as I said, one, two is the same as two, one. 
the roads are considered to be two ways, so you want to make sure that they're not duplicates and that they wouldn't be the inverse of each other. So, step six, check that result list does not contain the reverse of our current one. How can we do that? Well, we can do something similar here. We go if not any filter lambda. If you don't understand what lambdas are, lambda is just invoking uh, an anonymous method that we use to kind of just do a quick iteration. Um, if we did this manually, it would be like four X in range of this filtered list and we'd have to check it each time. But instead we can do a one liner where we check it within a Lambda. If you don't understand it, look up Lambda, lambda expressions within Python. Um, so Lambda R, R zero, equals equals jdx and r1 equals equals idx. Again, idx is our first index value that we are adding to. So idx is going to be the, the first value, the value of the first city, and jdx represents the value of the second city. So when we go through it, we've got to make sure that we, um, we're checking for the inverse before we go ahead and add it to our result list. Finally, if all this returns true and there is nothing in there that matches these conditions, we go result.append and we create our new uh, array within our array, idx comma jdx, like so. Because we've made essentially three determinations. We Well, really two determinations. Well, kind of. Basically, we filtered the roads based on them containing the first index, then we've checked to make sure that the roads do not contain values that start or end with our second index, and finally we've checked the result list to make sure that it doesn't already contain the inverse. Um, and then finally we go return results, like so. All right, let's see how this runs. Did I break? Hmm. Ah, spelled lambda wrong. All right, what else we got? What else did I break? Filter expected to arguments. Duh, of course. Um, so you need to add what you're filtering into the second argument of filter. So in this case, filtering filter roads because we're checking to see um, if filter roads doesn't contain anything with the second index. And here we're going to add result because we're checking to see that the result doesn't contain the inverse of what we initially planned out. Okay. Why is it saying, oh, because I put it, duh. I need to put it outside. Sorry about all the syntax errors, guys. And this will be a result. And I believe if I fix these two issues, we should be good. Where is it getting one argument? to the any instead of the filter? I think I did. I think I messed it up. Okay, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> what is going on here? I think I need to look up filter or something because it's saying the comments are starting to yell at me right now. Oh, they're talking about this filter on line seven. Duh. All right, guys. So with filter, you add your lambda, but then you also need your you need your roads like that. So it's a, it's a stupid mistake, but you got to pass in roads here, and then pass in filter here, and pass in results here, because in each one we're filtering differently. Each Name IDK is not defined. 
on line seven. Oh boy, I meant to type in IDX and I typed in IDK. Is that anywhere else? No, it looks like just line seven. Okay, whoa. Now that I've fixed all my bolt tests. Um, all right, it looks like 13 of 13 tests have passed. So let me bring this over here so I can hit submit. And let's see what she says. Boom. There it is. So obviously this didn't just take me 20 minutes to solve. Um, I have a lot of good notes and documentation and I already solved it in C sharp and kind of planned out my Python process in a similar manner. So, I mean, if you can solve this one in under an hour, I think you're pretty good. Um, if you have a different approach or a better approach, I'd be happy to hear it in the comments. But that's my approach. That's how I solve the uh, roads building exercise in code signals. So enjoy. Uh, thank you for coming by and checking it out. And check out my uh, solution in the description box below and see, uh, see what kind of solution you come up for. All right. Thanks so much, guys.